Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again. In this video, we will be walking through an end-to-end -end example of creating and deploying a suitelet that displays some search results in a list uh, in a custom page in the NetSuite UI. I will try to show as much of my normal workflow as possible, including source control, uh, like branching practices and merging. Uh, before we get started, if you would like to become a competent and confident SweetScript developer, you can get started right now with my free course on the best resources for learning SweetScript. Uh, you will find a link down at the top of the description. All right, let's get started. I will be adding this suitelet to an existing project that I already have. Uh, so here I am in my projects directory. Uh, and we have a project named Learn Sweet Script. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my project is up to date. So I have my master branch checked out, which uh, master branch is typically production ready code. So let's make sure we have the latest. Okay, we are already up to date. Great. Now, Essentially, what we're doing with this suitelet is adding a feature to an existing project. So whenever I do that, I like to make uh, feature-specific folders in my projects. So a feature might contain multiple scripts. It might not. In this case, it won't. Uh, we'll just have one suitelet. But I'd still like to keep everything related to this feature contained in one folder for organizational purposes. Okay, so we've made a Sweetlet results folder in our project that will uh, contain all of our work. I also wanna do the same in the file cabinet. Under Sweet Scripts, we already have our Learn Sweet Script project. Let's make a new folder for Sweetlet results. And that will eventually contain our script. Before I go too much further, um, doing feature development, I typically make uh, a separate feature branch to contain all the development, all of the commits for uh, that feature. So let's do that now. So we will make a new branch called examples slash sweetlet results. Um, I have several other, I, I use examples there as kind of a namespace or a folder almost for branch names just to organize different types of branches depending on whether it's a new example maybe a feature or maybe it's a bug fix um, no. we'll just make it singular instead okay so we have our new branch, which will contain all our development. We have a new folder in our project, which will contain all of the relevant source files uh, for the feature. And I think now it's time to write some code. Here's our new Sweetlet results folder. So let's create our Sweetlet in there. Now I have templates set up. These templates are publicly available in one of my GitLab repos. You can find a link down in the description. So let's create a new SweetScript 2.0 suitelet. And here is the skeleton for our suitelet. So first, let's change up our module description. Uh, just a quick description of what it does. Uh, we give our module a name here. Might be noticing a pattern. I'm trying to name everything, the script, the file, the folder, all the branch, all kind of the same, follow the same pattern. Uh, 
that'll help me locate things later on. My future self will be able to uh, thank, thank me. Uh, we got to change our module scope. We'll just use the default same account. We won't be using any governance yet. Okay, now a sweetlet just has one event uh, called on request that basically waits until the sweetlet receives an HTTP request. Um, the sweetlet gets past this context object and the context object contains a request property and a response property. We will, any input that comes in with the HTTP request uh, will come along through the request property. And any output that we want to write to the sweetlet, we will write using the methods on the response object. So before we do too much development, uh, we wanna just make sure that the sweetlet is working, it's deployed correctly, and it's accessible. So the only thing we're gonna do initially is log a message and write something to the page. So let's start by importing the log module. Technically, you don't need to do that. Uh, the log module is always available to all script types globally, but I like to be explicit with my module dependencies, so I always put it there. So right when we receive a request, let's just log a message to acknowledge that we received something. I like to use the audit uh, log level when uh, logging messages that kind of just, their only purpose is to tell me where I am in the script. Uh, they're not giving me any data or variable values or anything like that. Just kind of telling me where I'm at in my script. And then we want to write some, we actually want to write some output to the page. So like I said, we will do that with the response object. And the response object coming in on the context comes from the server response class or object. So we go look at the HTTP module and find the server response members. Uh, we don't care, we're not gonna care about most of this stuff, but you can see here a series of write methods. And these are how we can write different output to the page uh, resulting from a sweetlet. Uh, right now, we just wanna write some text or some HTML to the page. So we're going to employ the write method. So the write method takes uh, an output property that is just a string and that string can be uh, a raw string, it can be HTML or it can be XML. So I think we'll just write some simple HTML to the page as an indication that it's working. Okay, so we just write a hello world header to the page. And it should be very obvious if our page is working or not. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do right now, or to get started at least. So we go make our new script. I'm gonna be adding a new file. Let's see, I wanna put this in my Sweetlet results folder. There it is. And now let's browse. right there for us. We save that, create our script record. Now we always want to give our scripts a good descriptive name and ID and description so that again our future selves will thank us. I usually like to copy my module description, at least the main entry point module description. Name, ID, description all set. Let's deploy it as well. Uh, we only need this to respond to get requests. We don't care about post requests. Okay, so that is saved. It picked up our on request function. It knows it's a sweet lit. Let's test it out. 
Great, there's our hello world message. We go back to the deployment, check the logs. Yeah, there's our request received message. So it would appear that our sweetlet is accessible. It's working. Um, so now we should be able to make it do some real work. Now, very quickly before I do that, um, just to make it easier to access, access my sweetlet to deploy it to all roles, I want to add a link. So I'm using the classic center. Let's put this under lists. Since we're going to be searching cases, let's go to, let's put it under support. So we can save that. And now list support high priority cases. And boom, there is our sweetlet. Perfect. Okay, so now let's have this actually go out and do a search. Um, first, let's find let's find a save search that we can replicate. So I want to look at save searches. We're going to search cases here. Um, so let's do this one right here. We're going to replicate the my high priority cases search in our code. So we've just got two filters, one on priority and one on status. Now, both of these are um, customizable lists that we can find under setup, uh, support, case statuses, and oops, case priorities. So here are all the statuses we might filter on and here are the priorities. So we only want high priority cases and we want any case that's not closed. Now I always like to isolate my searches into their own functions so that they are much easier to identify, uh, to go find where searches are in my code. They're much easier to troubleshoot or update down the road if they're isolated in their own function. So we will need to import the search module to do this, so let's add that. You can import the modules in any order. I just like the log to be last for some reason, just personal preference. Add our log message just to tell us where we are in the script. Okay, what was the closed status? The closed status had an ID of five. So we look for statuses, any status except five. And then priority. Okay, what was the priority? High priority was one, ID of one. Let's see, we need to run the search. I don't expect too many results. Um, as, let's see, did I run this? So if we actually preview the results, uh, we have five. There's, so we should have five matching results. I grab the first 20, and that needs to be the output of our function. And so there we go. We have a search of cases that will find any case that is not closed and has a high priority. We will try to grab the first 20. Uh, no more than 20, and we'll return just a few columns. So now, yeah, instead of writing just a hello world message, let's make it a little more informative. So it should tell us how many uh, cases in our search results, and hopefully what we see is that we get five like we saw in the UI. So let's overwrite, let's upload. edit our script and just paste over. Got our new find cases function, our new message being uh, printed to the page. Save that. And 
There we go, we have five, as we would expect, perfect. And if we just circle back and check our logs, we can look and see we received the request, then we went to find the cases, got the correct output here. All right, so it looks like at this point we are getting the correct search results. Now let's actually render those to the page. Now in order to draw custom UI components, we need the n slash UI slash server widget module. So let's import that. Now I add those requires tags for my documentation generator, certainly not um, required to do that, it's not mandatory. Uh, that's something special just for my my own setup, my own project environment. Okay, so we want to actually write our search results to a list. So the UI module provides us with a list component. Okay, let's look at the list members. Actually, before we even do that, what we really want to look at is the create list methods. How do we actually create a list? We have two options when creating a list. We have to give it a title. We give our list a title. Uh, and then we can optionally hide or display the native NetSuite navigation bar. Um, it's false by default, so it'll be hidden, but we want that to be true. Or, I'm sorry, we want that to be false. We don't want to hide the navigation bar, so we can leave that to its default. So all we need to do is give a, our list a title. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna make a separate function and that function's responsibility is going to be to render, uh, create the list appropriately and render it to the page. To keep this function from having to do too much, I'm just gonna pass in the results that it will render. The render function doesn't need to know how to go get the results, it should just be given the results that it will render. Okay, so that will create a list component. Eventually, that will be the output of the function as well. Now we need to, do, what we want to do now is define what columns are in our list. So what columns are going to show up? Obviously we want the same columns in our list that we have in our search results. And we add columns with the list objects add column method. So in order to add a column, we need to specify, we have to specify an ID, a label, and a field type. Um, in this case, all of our columns are text fields. So that'll be nice and simple. And the label will be a string. So we have four columns, case number, status, priority, and title. Okay, let's give them some labels. And there are our four text columns that we will be displaying. So we have our list object is created. We've defined which columns the list will have. Now we need to actually put data into it. So let's go back. How do we do that? Looking at the help. And our list object has, there's two methods, add row, singular, which would let us basically iterate over our results one at a time and individually add them uh, row by row to our list. But we don't want to do that. There's a much easier way with this add rows, plural, method. So add rows looks for an array of objects and it uses the key of the object to determine which column to put the value in. Uh, so you can build a list of objects this way like this example does, but even easier, you can just pass an array of search results directly to add rows. And because we made our list column IDs match our search column IDs, as in like case number, status, priority, etc. Because they match, we can just pass our search results directly to add rows, and NetSuite will automatically know how to render the search result as a list row. 
So there we go. Remember, we will just be, we're expecting to just pass in the search results. So we can just pass those search results directly to add rows. Now we just need to put our render list function to use. So we've got a function to find our cases. We've got a function to uh, render those cases as a list of search results. Now we need to actually write that list to the page. Now NetSuite, the response object, actually makes that pretty easy. If we look at the response object, remember we had that series of write methods. The one we care about now is write page. So when we're creating either an assistant, a form, or a list like we are here, uh, we can use write page to, to just write the nice HTML for us uh, so that it looks like NetSuite rather than having to write custom HTML ourselves. So we're gonna use our response objects write page method and just pass in our created list. Now the render list function, we, we draw the list with that by calling that, but it expects the search results, which we get with our find cases function. So we go get our search results, we pass them to the render list function, which returns the appropriate list for write page to draw on the page. Let's upload that and see how we did. And there are our search results. Great, so we've got five just like before, but now we've got actual data displaying in our suitelet. Now you notice that the status and the priority are displaying their IDs, not their text or their labels, unfortunately. So it'd be nice if this said hi instead of one, uh, and these said, you know, in progress or, or whatever the numbers represent. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of control over that when we're passing search results directly into add rows. So we have a little work to do if we want to uh, display text here instead of internal IDs. Remember that add rows can, can accept either a list of search results like we've done here or a list of objects, a list of key value pairs where the key is the column that we want to put the value in, and the value is the data we want to put in that column. So what I'm gonna do is make a function that translates an individual search result to an object that add rows would understand. So the input is a single search result, and the output will be that search result translated to a plain object. So the properties of our objects should be named after the columns that we want to put the data in. All right, now for each property, for each column, we want to read the appropriate value out of the search result. Now this is actually, this is essentially what our suilet's already doing. Uh, when we pass in search results directly, NetSuite automatically goes through all the results and pulls the value from each one. But since status and priority are select fields, the value, as you can see here, is their internal ID. If we want the label from a select value, we need to use get text instead of get value. And that should get the words like hi or closed or in progress rather than the internal ID. Now that takes, that function takes a single result and translates it to an appropriate object. We also, we want to now expand that to um, translate an entire list of search results. And that's pretty simple. I, I like to use uh, the map, the arrays map function to do that. 
you could just as easily write a for loop in here if that's what you're more comfortable with. But the map function just iterates over an array, in this case the results array being passed in, and invokes a function on it. So we want to iterate over our search results and pass each result, translate each result to the object with our result to object method. Now we just need to put those translations to use. So we are finding our search results. Before we pass them into the list, we need to translate them. All right, so we find our search results. We pass those to the translator function, which will translate them from search results to JavaScript objects. And then we pass that list of objects along to render list which gives them to add rows. Refresh, and now the priorities all say hi, and you can see the status, uh, the text, rather than the internal IDs. So now that our feature development is done, we have developed it, we've tested it. Uh, so we want to commit it now to our branch. Always want to give a nice detailed commit message uh, telling what we did. If you have maybe like issue numbers from your project management or issue tracking system, it's good to link those in here. I don't have any for this, obviously, but you can commit that and push it up to the remote. So now any of my teammates could pull down my branch and either help out or review my code, uh, test it out themselves, something like that. And once we have deemed everything production ready for this feature, we can then take our feature branch here and merge it up into uh, the master branch, the production level. I use the no fast forward switch there. Uh, you don't have to. That's a little bit out of the scope of this uh, video. And now we push our production ready code out to everyone else. And now everyone has or can get the latest production level code with our new sweetlet, our new feature. All right, and I think we're done. That is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Click subscribe to stay tuned to all my videos and become a competent, confident SweetScript developer yourself. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I will see you next time.